For the most part, we don't know what lies beneath the surface of our oceans. Most of the waters and ocean floor remain unexplored. But with new technology, projects are underway to find out what lies in the deep. Since 2004, a team of scientists has been cruising the Caribbean surrounding Puerto Rico, as well as St. Thomas and St. John Islands in the U.S. Virgin Islands to create a comprehensive map of the seabed. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is the U.S. agency in charge of mapping, protecting, and managing some of these waters. They're updating old nautical charts. So a nautical chart has soundings on it, just, you know, discrete locations. But our map is continuous. We can see the ups and downs, the, the, uh, the ridges, the ledges of the sea bottom. And all of that is important information for, for a manager, as well as to make the linkages between uh, the seafloor habitat and the types of organisms that are using that. The waters off the coasts of St. Thomas and St. John have important habitat, including coral reefs. The waters have protected areas as well as areas where commercial fishing is allowed. Each year, the NOAA ship Nancy Foster zigzags through the water using sonar to scan the seabed. The ship emits more than 3,500 pings per second in a wide fan, creating an image as if painting strips of data across the sea floor. Weeks of back and forth sailing in a pattern much like mowing a lawn yields traditional chart information, including bathymetry, or depth, in incredible detail. But the sonar data reveals a lot more than depth. Based on the intensity of the echo, scientists can tell if the bottom is hard, sandy, soft, covered in coral, seagrass, or other soft plants. By combining the sonar data with direct observations, NOAA creates detailed maps of the seafloor habitat. The ROV is a key to understanding the sonar data. Operated by scientists on the ship, it sends back video and still images. Then, the sonar data can be combined with the visual data. The researchers are looking for several answers to questions. Why are fish going to a certain location? Uh, are there behaviors that are going on? Um, are there certain types of fish that are going there? So there's a kind of a, a very focused science application. And then there, there's other science that we conduct, which is applied towards a management community. To effectively manage commercial fish species and protect non-commercial sea life, officials need to know the size of fish populations, where they are, and their overall health. The ship is equipped with what is basically a scientific grade fish finder. The technology that I'm using is very similar to commercial fish finders or the fish finders that your grandpa might have on his fishing boat on a lake, except these are scientific grade echo sounders. We transmit a pulse of sound or a ping. That, that ping is transmitted through the water column and it reflects off of anything that's in the water column that's of differing density than the surrounding media. Uh, that could be the bottom, which is very hard, it could be air bubbles that's produced by wakes, waves, or, or boats, or it could be uh, gas bladders or swim bladders in the case of fish. Each night as the ship sails back and forth off land, Taylor's sonar spots the fish and adds important information to the maps. So the habitats are very important, clearly, but we need to better understand how fish are using those habitats so we can better understand how to manage the habitats for the fish. After the sonar runs all night, attention turns to the ROV. Brian Costa uses sonar to pick locations for the ROV to explore. It's just one of the tools in our toolbox to create a habitat map. We can get a picture of what, what's down there in the image, but we don't necessarily know what is growing on top of that, that reef structure or what it's made out of. So that's where the camera comes in. As researchers pilot the ROV deep under the sea, scientists note the health of the coral types of fish, including the invasive lionfish, and inspect man-made debris, including lost fishing gear and even newly found shipwrecks. All of this data will help scientists better understand the reefs here and offer insights into ocean changes elsewhere. One of the most important things about the work we're doing is we're characterizing coral reefs that have never been uh, observed before. So we're visiting new areas and um, Getting that baseline of the, the health and condition and the extent of the coral reefs. The NOAA scientists hope eventually to develop their techniques further 
so scientists can someday have maps of all the world's seabeds.